In this video, we're going to use Inkscape to create a layered image from a photograph. A lot of people are doing this with things like Stencilgram on uh, Stencilgram.com. That creates a two-color or a one-layer image. I'm going to do this with Inkscape and create a probably about a three-layer image using different shades of gray. And I'm going to begin by just dragging and dropping my picture into Inkscape. And I'm going to choose Embed. You could also go to File and Option to open this as well. You can zoom in and out on Inkscape on your keyboard by using the minus and plus keys. And if I adjust the size of the picture, I want to hold the Control key while I use the corner arrow. And that allows the width and height perspective to remain proportional. Now with the image selected, I'm going to go to Path, Trace Bitmap, and I'm going to choose Grays, and I want to Smooth, and Stack Scans options selected, without the Remove Background selected. The picture is really going to depend a lot on the picture type, the contrast that's in the picture, and some of your personal preferences, so there may be some trial and error involved to get the image to look the way you want it to. I usually find that most images scan best at somewhere between 5 to 10 scans. And so this picture I'm going to do 5, and I'm going to click Update, and I should see a picture that resembles the image that I have on my system. And when I click OK, you'll notice that as opposed to other videos, this takes just a few seconds to do. The more scans you have, the longer it will take. If you have 10 or 12, it may take 5 seconds or so. Now I'm going to close this box as it's no longer needed. And my vector is on top, so I can move that over. And I can get rid of my original image. Now with the image selected, go to Object Ungroup. And now we can drag out our various layers. I'm going to zoom out just a little so that we have room to work and we can see all of our different layers. Most of the time I do not keep all the layers. As you can see this bottom layer is a solid gray color so I'm just going to get rid of that one by hitting the delete key. And I'm going to try to create three different layers with this image. It's important not to, in my experience, not to use the object uh, raise to top or lower to bottom or raise or lower functions because due to the shading you want these layers to remain in the order that they that the system creates them from the image and as we move these over top of each other we'll see that the different layers make up different parts of the picture and sometimes we want to move these around. I'll move them around to see which one gives me the best separation and look. And as you can see, if I put this one on top, there's not a lot of difference between it and a couple of the other layers. I'll zoom in. And you can see that there's just a little bit of space between the layers. And I want a little bit more contrast than that. So I'm going to move that one. I'm going to use this one. And let's say we move this one into place along with the black. And there you see what I mean by trial and error because now I have a good separation between the three layers. Now if your, your layers have the same width and height borders, you can highlight all of the items, hit Control shift a for a line, and then you can use the vertical and horizontal center to line them up perfectly. Sometimes when you separate layers, the borders along the edges are not the same once you have moved them and separated them, so you can't do that. You have to place them visually. But in this case, I'm able to use the alignment tools to layer them properly. And now I have a really good looking reshade image. So I could use different colors. I could use black and uh, gray and white if I wanted. Or I could even change some of the colors using the color palette in Inkscape to see what they would look like. So if I perhaps wanted to see three different shades of brown, I could select a layer, select the next layer, and then continue to change the colors. 
to see which one would look the best. You might be wondering, once we cut our layers, how do we line them up properly for placement on its destination surface? There's a couple of different options. In this case, we have nice, flat, straight, square edges that we can line up and layer one over top of the other. In a lot of cases, you may not have that. So we would select our object and ungroup it. We can insert some shapes, such as squares. I like to duplicate so that I have two objects to line my layers up with. I use my arrow keys to move the squares into place so that they're on the grid. Hold down shift and select both and then attach them. Now that I have my set of evenly spaced objects, I duplicate and make copies for each layer. And then I select the layer and the set of boxes and attach them. Then I get my next set of boxes and place them exactly with the other objects using my arrow keys. If you have difficulty selecting your layer based on the layer orders in the, in the project design, you can use the control key in the layers panel to select multiple layers as well and then attach them. Then finally, our third layer, we do the same thing and attach those. And when we cut our layers, you'll see that you have the squares at the bottom of each layer. Line those squares up and place your vinyl on the surface and layer it properly using those objects. And then once your vinyl is all layered, you simply peel those little squares off and it leaves behind your multiple layers that is in the correct alignment. Hopefully my video has been helpful to you. If it has been, please subscribe to my channel and by all means, please share my videos.